This is the place to do your work, right in the middle of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Wow, how, what's the speed? That sucks. That's doable. Not bad for underway and radar spinning. And yeah. Not bad. I'll take it. Last time aboard Freedom, we kicked off our winter cruising here in the Pacific Northwest. We were excited to finally cross the border into beautiful British Columbia, Canada, but not before a short detour down the Hood Canal for a few days in some new and some old getaways. If you missed it, be sure to check it out. Today we're at Anchor before continuing on our journey north. It's not only a great chance to give our headliner hack its first real test, but it's a great excuse to make a quick pit stop in Port Gamble, one of our favorite waterfront towns located at the entrance into the Hood Canal. Perfect if we go into town to take a little walk and go to the store. Basically, uh, we just gotta make sure we're in the dinghy by 4:45, which is when sunset is, anyways, because that's when the tide will start dropping off. So we won't get beached and have to spend the night on the Port Gamble beach. That might not be a bad place to have to <laughs> be holed up. That's true. We'll put a hat on. It's cold out. What's the shop vac for? I don't know why I brought this. The shop vac is so we can put some air in the tubes because it's cold. So oh my god. There's not a lot of air in there. Whoa. Alrighty. How cold is it? What do you think? 38? 40? Yeah. Definitely got to fill this up with air. Yeah. <laughs> How fast do you think before we'd sink if we didn't fill it up? Oh, I think, uh, I don't think you need air. I think the fiberglass hull itself will float. Oh, is that a gunshot? Probably. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't at us. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. That's definitely a gunshot. <laughs> It's like a shotgun shot. Yeah. Wow. Orange. That is my favorite tool oh, on the boat. We use it for so much stuff. Anything spills, anything going on, um, yeah. back carpet gets wet, just sucks it right up. There we go. Is that all about 10 seconds and you're done? Yep. That's like the perfect amount of pressure. We don't normally pull the car out of the garage, so to speak, when it's this cold outside, but since Port Gamble doesn't have a dock of any kind, we're heading to shore via the dinghy.
have a couple updates for you. The headliners in the pilot house have been amazing. Um, we didn't have the generator on last night, so no dehumidifier, nothing. And they were, they're amazing. They're still perfect. Um, we've been gone for about a week in a ton of rain. So the majority of this week has been super, super wet. And the dehumidifier has been a little struggling to keep up with it, but they have stayed darn near perfect, super tight. Um, usually the minute we turn the generator off and there's no dehumidifier, kind of regardless of the time of year, we start to see a little sagging, especially around the edges, like the hatch edges where the material is curved and folded differently and stapled differently. So far that trick has worked. So if you watched last week's video, you might be curious to know if it's holding up. Fingers crossed that it continues to hold up. We've gone down this route before where it holds up for a few months and then just deteriorates and starts to bubble and you know. The second update we have for you is about Starlink. I know a lot of you guys have been curious um, to know how Starlink has been working out for us since we installed it. Gosh, I think that was in April already. The sad reality is I personally think it has gone downhill big time. Some days it flat out doesn't work. Some days I just think the whole damn thing sucks. Sean, on the other hand, has a little better feeling about it. He's not on the boat using it as often as I am. Um, and to be fair, it really has taken a dive just in the last three weeks. So we're in the middle of November right now. Um, at the end of October, I noticed just this drop off one day um, during peak hours. So between like five and 9 p.m. in the evening, it it like doesn't work. I did um, some speed tests on my AT&T hotspot that I end up having to use a lot more lately, which is unlimited, thank goodness, and the Starlink and the AT&T was light years faster. Um, I think Starlink is just becoming much more congested and they just need to get more, more satellites up in the sky. We have the residential plan with mobility. So, and we try not to use it underway. I think they say like, if you're going 10 miles an hour or faster, it'll just not work. So we just try not to use it underway. We switch over to our T-Mobile hotspot or like if I'm using something I hotspot on my phone or we just try not to use it. But it's been a huge disappointment in the last month. It had been pretty perfect and then just took a took a dive. Um, hopefully it's just a fluke while they continue to ramp things up. It seems like everybody and their grandma now is getting a Starlink. So they probably started to extend more service areas or extend their service areas maybe faster than they could support via satellites. I'm not a techie, I don't know, but our update is for us, we're not extremely happy like we were two months ago. And even when uh, we first installed it, um, but yeah, we're hoping it'll get better over time. We'll keep updating you every few months or so, or as we see a difference, um, hopefully we'll see an improvement or something else. We'll give you guys an update, um, but yeah, uh, hopefully that helps if you're thinking of getting a Starlink. Um, don't think it's going to maybe solve all of your problems, especially if you're buying it for a boat or something where you need it to be mobile. So, yeah. Are you blow drying your hair? Yeah, it's cold outside. Oh, well, that's why? But when it was warm out, you were blow drying your hair. I want a wet head. Uh, do I have any other tools in there that you need to start borrowing? Do you have a curling iron at all? <laughs> no, no curling iron. Do you need a flat iron? A crimper? A who? A crimper? What's that? Is that for like making paninis? <laughs> <laughs> getting the dinghy stuck on shore, we're arriving at the start of today's flood tide so that by the time we get back to the dinghy, it'll be waiting nicely for us at higher water and not beached. Dragging a 450 pound inflatable boat with a 175 pound motor down the beach at low tide isn't exactly a walk in the park.
even though Port Gamble isn't the most boater-friendly town, it's always worth the trip no matter what time of the year it is. There's an extensive scenic trail system just steps from the center of town, which is perfect for getting our steps in after some long days of cruising. And no trip to Port Gamble would be complete without a trip to the general store. It's our favorite store, probably in this whole region. And they have an amazing candy section. Oh, Martha, look how pretty. After an afternoon on shore, we're heading back to Freedom for the night before making our way across the border into Canada. heading into Canada. The border has officially opened as of uh, not that long ago, a couple, maybe a month and a half ago or so. Uh, so we are making a beeline into Canada. We have missed cruising in British Columbia for nearly three years now, so we are stoked to be going back. Uh, we are just crossing the tip of Marrowstone Island, about to head into the Strait, uh, and then our first stop is going to be Victoria for a week. Man, it is a perfect day to be going back. Uh, there's zero wind, 0 0.7 knots of wind, so it's absolutely perfect. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's freezing outside, but we'll take the sun and the blue sky and the flat water and no wind. Uh, what are we doing? What are the stats? We are cruising at 6.3 knots. Uh, we got about six more hours to go. We've been on, on the water now since 5 a.m., about 5.15 a.m. Our ETA is 3.30 p.m., uh, so it'll be great. We'll get tied up. Um, we're going to be in the Causeway Floats Marina right by the Empress. I'm just so excited to get back and just, you know, see what's new. Like I said, it's been three years, so a lot can change in three years, maybe not. And uh, then after Victoria, we'll be heading even farther north, so super excited for uh, winter boating. Conditions on the water are calm, the hours just fly by. We've been underway now for nearly six hours, so it's time to get these guys out for a quick break. I also forgot to boil the last of our eggs, since raw eggs aren't allowed into Canada at the moment due to the occurrence of a highly pathogenic avian flu. We also made sure to eat all of our chicken beforehand since no uncooked poultry is allowed, as well as many fruits and veggies since those are usually problematic. Over the years, we've found that the Canadian entry rules regarding food to be ever-changing and sometimes confusing, so we always triple-check the Canada Border Services Agency website to get the most up-to-date rules. Yes, good use of time. Wow, how, what's the speed? 
Yeah, 90 megs down. Upload? Uh, four. Four? That sucks. Four or five. <laughs> That's doable. But 90. Not bad for underway and radar spinning. And yeah. Not bad. We'll take it. outside. Yeah, but we're getting close. We are pulling into the Victoria Harbor and we're gonna go to the customs dock and make our call and check in. This is gonna be really interesting because the last time we came to Canada three years ago, our check-in process in Vancouver was anything but easy. So uh, this will be interesting. Is it easy just on the phone or are they gonna come and search the boat? Who knows? Hopefully it's fast and we can get to our slip and start our stay here in Victoria. and then there's a phone there that you call. Um, sometimes we've done it through an app. I'm not sure what Sean's gonna do today, but uh, hopefully it goes smoothly. Okay, we're all tied up. I think only one of us is actually technically allowed on the dock, so I'm gonna stay in the pilot house while Sean calls us in and gets everything situated. Boater and I'm calling to check in. We are in Victoria at the Raymer uh, Point Dock. It looks like we're getting lucky today with our customs check in. Sean called the number listed on the Canadian Border Services Agency website for marine check in and was able to complete the necessary steps over the phone without getting off the boat or having anyone board the boat. They took information like our vessel registration number, full names, passport numbers, length of stay, our reason for stay, information for any and all animals on board, and confirmation that they are both up to date on rabies vaccinations, confirmation that we aren't in possession of illegal firearms, what foods we have on board, and how much alcohol we have. After only a few short minutes, we got our number and we're good to go. so bad? No. Better than the last time. Yeah. We got a reporting number. We just got to hang it in one of the windows and we are good to go. For five weeks. Yeah. Six weeks. Six weeks, right? Six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, about six weeks. We're Canadians, eh? Uh-oh. Our little pouch broke. I have another one, I think. I'll be back and forth a few times though. So I need to keep my passport in my computer bag. Yeah. He'll be here the whole six weeks. Oh yeah. Someone's gotta keep an eye on the boat. Yeah, someone's gotta watch the office. Ugh. 
even Sully and Martha are excited to be spending the next six weeks in Canada, or maybe just for dinner and a long walk. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of our stay here in Victoria and farther north into British Columbia, be sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. We'll see you next time.